Hi everyone, today we are going to uh, do a quick walkthrough of phase three. So let's get to it. Uh, right now I'm assuming that you already have your VPN up and running and that you can log in to the Linux machines with no problem. Right now I'm working on example bomb one. I already have uh, finished phase one and phase two, so I know what those answers are. And I'm going to get straight into how we take a look at phase three. So first step, let's go ahead and take a look at bomb.s. So now I'm gonna go over to the whiteboard so that we can take a look at each of these pieces individually. I'm going to first delineate the boilerplate. So this is where we deal with canary. Second, notice that what this phase here is doing is getting our data. So it's comparing to make sure that there are uh, more than one object that was returned by the scanf function. So as long as that worked, then it did not jump over to explode bump. Thirdly, we can notice that there is a phase here with some kind of a check for first number. We do something with it and do then jump. After we have uh, jumped to avoid our exploding bomb, appears to have a sequence of move instructions. If we look at page two, that sequence of move and jump instructions continues all the way down here. Each of those jump instructions, every single one of them, ends up jumping to the same location. That's 17.5c. 17.5c, this one right here, compares something. And if it's equal, jumps down over the move explosion into the leftover function ending boilerplate. So now that we've looked through the code, let's try running through some of the uh, debugging software. So in order to do that, we want to run GDB bomb. We want to set a breakpoint for explode bomb. And because we're going to be working on phase three, we want to set a breakpoint as soon as we get to phase three. So now at this point, it's okay to just go ahead and run it. Um, we're going to put in the answer to phase one and then the phrase that you came up with for the second phase. Now, here's the trick. Um, before we can actually work on phase three, we need to actually give it some input. We won't know until after we try it whether that's going to be correct or not. Most likely, the first few that you try will not be correct. So I'm going to go ahead and put in three, and then we'll try 492. So now we are in a breakpoint because we've hit phase three, it's time to take a look at where we're at. Because when we disassemble the code, it's gonna take a lot of room. So we put in disassemble and then the function that we wanna take a look at. Um, and there's this neat arrow on the side that tells us exactly where we're at. But um, we already took a look at this earlier. The point is that we can track exactly where we happen to be inside of the code while we are running. So we're going to start stepping through the code until we get to um, plus 54. So this load effective address uh, is where things really start to get interesting. Now we don't want next, we want next i. If we just do next, it's going to uh, either 
succeed at the phase three or it'll take us to explode bomb. Uh, but next I will let us step through the instructions. So I just put in next I twice. If we look at disassemble phase three, one more time, um, you'll see that the arrow pointer has actually moved down twice. So we are going to uh, do next I three more times and then see where we're at. All right, so now we are at move. And when we are one more down from that, uh, we'll be at that load effective address. Um, before we call to scan F, we want two more then. So now we are inside of call Q. So this is where that uh, call to scan F is going on. And if we do one more, we should be at the comparison step. Uh, this line of code is comparing one to EAX. So let's take a look at what compare does, and then we'll come back to this. So for a test, we're looking at A and B. So if both A and B are zero, then we set the zero flag. If not, then we don't set the zero flag. Compare is different. Compare actually performs an operation. It performs B minus A, and then sets the zero flag, the sign flag. Now this tells us things like, whether or not what we looked at is the same, these things tell us different conditions. So when you're ready to take a look at what is in EAX, we'll look at info registers. Here are the first 16 registers uh, in all of their glory. RAX, remember, is the same thing as EAX, uh, 64 bits wide rather than 32 bits wide. So RAX is currently 2 and we're comparing that to uh, the value 1. Um, the part that happens after that is less than or equal. So based on our understanding of how comparison works, we know that this jump is not going to happen and therefore we are not going to explode at this time. Right after this, we're comparing seven to the value in RSP. So at that point, it's time to take a look at what is actually in RSP. So first we need to know uh, where exactly RSP is. So first we need to look into info registers. Uh, RSP is currently this, uh, 0x7FFFFFFFFE310. We can take a look at that. So in order to do that, we're going to look into memory. We want one value that is formatted as an integer. And it starts at that value that we found in RSP. So that's 7FFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFFF
but for our purposes, three should be fine because it's a number that is uh, not above seven. So next it's moving that three that we gave it into EAX and then uh, we have our interest and call to load effective address. So we're gonna step through this code a few times. Next I, All right, and now if we disassemble main, uh, we are on that load effective address call. So let's take a look inside of RDX. So RDX, does it look like our IP? Not yet. So in order to see what's going to get saved into RDX, uh, we have to increment one more time so that, that uh, instruction has now executed. So now RDX has become this 5555556E A0. So now let's take a look at what happens next, because this is the really interesting part. So we did the load effective address. We've got Gosh, the exact same number that it has after the hashtag next to that one. Um, but it's the move SLQ that's interesting. So note that the parentheses in this first argument mean that we are going into memory. And the place that we are looking in memory is that um, address that we just calculated plus that first number that we put in, that three, multiplied by four. So in this frame, we're going to do some math. We need to add OX5555555 6EA0 plus some number. We decided to use 3 times 4. So we're adding C here. So that ends up being all of that same mess. So let's go take a look into memory. Uh, we want to take a look at this for a uh, single value that is a word and it's going to be calculated as uh, the address. So this address is 5555555 ea 0 Now, no, this is the value before that uh, 3 times 4 gets added to it. But the point that I'd like to make here is that I didn't have to put in a 3. It could have been any number. Uh, between 1 and 7, which means it'd actually be really nice to show seven of these word values. All of them look pretty similar, but if you look closely, there are differences. So the first thing to do is select which one of these uh, is actually getting used by the code this time. So let's swap out that zero for a C and take it down to one value. So this is FFFFE888. So we're gonna take that value um, and this is the value that gets saved here into RAX. So the next step is adding the address that we calculated from the load effective address plus this value. So for that, we're going to take it to the whiteboard. Then we're going to come back and show uh, what happens when we uh, move on in the program. So when we take the value stored in RDX and add it to the value that's currently in RAX. 
uh, this is how we end up with the address that we jump to. 5555555. Right, so now that we understand uh, where we're going in this, uh, we are looking for a address that's 5555555. Five, 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 five. Five seven two eight. Now that corresponds to one of the addresses inside of this function. So all of these addresses have that five 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 seven. Uh, so we're looking specifically for the address that begins with two eight, which is an instruction phase three plus ninety one move a value that is uh, the exact number in hexadecimal uh, to the 2B3 into EAX. And then it's jumping to the instruction uh, at, uh, if I'm using the, the shorthand, because all of these have the 5555, 5555557. Uh, it's moving to instruction 5C. So 5C is an instruction to compare EAX, uh, the value that we just moved in there directly, with the second number that we entered. So that's the value that's found um, four bytes into the stack. And if those two values are equal, the next instruction is going to jump over the call to explode bomb uh, and then go into the boilerplate for the end of a function. So what this tells us is that we have two values for this function. The first one is how far are we going to jump the first time? Um, because that tells us a different value that we're going to be moving into EAX. And then Second, um, that value that we move into EAX is going to be the second thing that we need to put into our stack. So for this particular version of the phase three lab, we can solve this uh, with just a little bit of hexadecimal math and a lot of GDB help. So the first thing that we want to do here is remember uh, this we already have put in our input for. So it's not going to uh, work. It will explode the bomb. So we've learned everything that we can from this run. If we use next rather than next i, takes us to a breakpoint and explode bomb, we can rerun. And now we know that the answer to this bomb is uh, some number and then the piece that gets moved in uh, based on that number. So after a little bit of math, we did figure that out. So the number that we figured out from the 2B3 was 691. So now if we hit next rather than next I, we diffuse the face. All right, so in order to get out of here, remember you can just quit. We'll see you for phase four.